I have to say that everything I do now is really a second career. It's not what I started out in my life, my professional life doing. But it all stems to something that comes from my childhood. I have a friend who I've known since we were three years old. We were born nine days apart. We went to lovey-dovey preschool together. We grew up together. But on the first day of our senior year of high school, something horrific happened, which is that his parents were murdered in their own house. And he woke up on the first day of our senior year of high school to find their bodies. And even worse is that by the end of the day, he was in handcuffs, having charged with killing his parents. And the next summer, he was convicted and sentenced to 50 years to life. Now, I believe that my friend Marty was innocent, and I advocated for him. Since there are a lot of journalists here in the room, and I'm on the panel with two distinguished journalists, I should say that at the time, I was a future journalist who was the editor-in-chief of The Purple Parrot, our high school newspaper, which in retrospect, I think deserves a Pulitzer Prize if they can do those retroactively. But I wrote, and I researched the case and wrote that I believe Marty was innocent and that his father's business partner was involved. And it was later proven that his father's business partner hired hitmen who killed his parents. But none of that mattered because he was railroaded. No one listened to the Purple Parrot. And Marty went in a completely different direction. He likes to say now, Mark went to Yale, I went to jail. And you can't imagine more divergent paths. And I moved on with my life, and I went to graduate school and got a PhD in political science. Started to teach at Georgetown as a professor of European politics. Nothing to do with criminal justice, nothing even to do with the US. But this issue of Marty, the story always sat with me, was eating away at me, and I would tell people about it. And one day, I reached out to him. We started visiting. We started writing letters. We became very close again. And one day, in the prison visiting room, I made him a promise that changed my life forever. I said, Marty, I'm going to do everything I can to help get you out of prison, whatever it takes. And that actually included going to law school, even though I was already a tenured professor at that point. Became a 1L, and I dedicated my life to getting Marty out of prison. And after 17 and a half years that he served, he was exonerated. And there's an incredible, you know, happy ending to that story. And what's amazing also is that immediately he went on and got his college degree, he got his law degree, he's an attorney, a criminal defense attorney helping others. But we also run a program together at Georgetown, where I've been teaching now for almost 20 years, called Making an Exoneree. And we have our undergraduate students reinvestigate possible wrongful conviction cases. When we started this program, a lot of people thought, oh, this is a cute little exercise. They didn't even believe it was real. They thought it was like a moot court or something. And the first time we taught the course, we used our own experience on both sides of a wrongful conviction. Four months after the course ended, we had an exoneration. Valentino Dixon walked out of prison thanks to new evidence. He'd served 27 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. And thanks to three undergraduate students, he was exonerated. And I have to give one Philadelphia component to the story. Because a month after Valentino Dixon's exoneration, I was at Georgetown on the stage with Meek Mill, Philadelphia's own. And we were doing an event talking about his own saga and story and the, the tragedy of probation, particularly in Pennsylvania. And as they were introducing me, they said that Mark Howard had helped Valentino Dixon get exonerated after 27 years. And Meek Mill turned to me, and he said, yo, you helped a dude get out after 27 years? I have a friend in Pennsylvania who's innocent who's been in for 27 years. His name is Eric Riddick. I said, give me his contact information. Let's see if we can investigate it. We took on the case the next year. A year and a half later, Eric Riddick walked out after 29 years, wrongfully convicted here right downtown Philadelphia, thanks to three undergraduate students again. A month later, Keith Washington walked out after 12 years. And a year later, Orlando Jones III after 37 years and two months. So there's another part of the story, but I've gone on too long. But that's my origin story. It has to do with Marty, my childhood friend, and our dedication to helping other wrongfully convicted people get out of prison. But as you'll hear later, but I want to give Sherry a chance, it goes now far beyond just wrongful convictions and to the humanity of all incarcerated people.